Allah. We have here a very special treat. Inshallah, after everyone takes a break, make your prayer and come back. But we have a beloved brother, beautiful scholar, uh, a fighting Muslim, fighting in the jihad, peace of be the law, and that is Brother Ahmed Didek. He's going to be here in just a little while, inshallah, to talk to the Muslims. When we heard that it was possible for him to be a part of this uh, Dawah effort, uh, the Imam automatically offered that hospitality, the facilities, everything that we could do to be here, make him welcome. Welcome, my brother. Assalamu alaikum. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. So once again, we uh, look forward to this. After the Maghrib, inshallah, we would like to uh, come back. Inshallah, uh, Brother Didad, if you will, greet the people before you go. Inshallah, uh, meet the Imam. Salaamu Alaikum. A lot of us don't realize this, but uh, Brother Didad holds a lot of trust with us. Uh, 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 Auzu Billahi Minash Shaitanir Rajeem. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. وَإِن تَتَوَلَّوْ يَسْتَبْدِلْ قَوْمًا غَيْرَكُمْ ثُمَّ لَا يَكُنُوا أَمْثَالَكُمْ صدق الله صدق الله المران عظيم Mr. Chairman and brethren I bring to you peace and salutations from the deepest south of Africa If you look at the map of the continent of Africa at the southmost point, you will find a country called South Africa. In that country live some half a million Muslims. And on their behalf, I wish you peace and salutations. I say, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My dear brothers and sisters, I read to you a small segment of a verse from Surah Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. There is a chapter in the Holy Quran and the title of the chapter is Muhammad. If you look at an index, like the Quran I have in my hand by Abdullah Yusuf Ali, if you have that Quran, if you open the index, just like a dictionary, under M, you'll find the word Muhammad, and it'll tell you it is chapter number 47. And in that chapter 47, the last verse, chapter th uh, verse 38, I have quoted to you the last segment of the last verse. I repeat, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, wa in tatawallaw yastabdil qawman ghayrakum. Allah Ta'ala is addressing us Muslims that, O oh, you Muslims, if you turn back from the duties and responsibilities which Allah Ta'ala has imposed on you for being the khaira ummatin, the best of people. See, Allah describes us. He says, Kuntum khaira ummatin ukhrijat nas. You are the best of people evolved for mankind. What makes you the best of people? Is it because some of us claim Arab blood in us, or some claim to be Pakistanis, or Pathans, Afghanis, and some from West Africa? What makes us great? What gives us this honor and this privilege, being the Khaira Ummatin, the best of people? The thing that makes us the Khaira Ummatin is Allah says, Ta'muruna bil ma'rufi wa tanhawna anil munkar, because you enjoin what is right and you forbid what is wrong. And you believe in Allah. If these are your qualities, then you are the best of people. If you are the best of people, then this honor also puts upon us certain responsibilities. 
There is no honor without responsibility. The Imam of the Masjid carries with him certain responsibilities. The mayor of a town carries with him certain responsibilities. The manager or director of an institution carries with him certain responsibility. So there is no honor without responsibility. If Allah puts upon us this honor of being the best of people, it also carries with it certain responsibility. And that responsibility is that we are to share this honor with others. And in the first instance, the very first people Allah Bari Ta'ala wants us to share this with are the Jews and the Christians. In that very verse, Allah says, Kuntum khaira ummatin ukhridat nas ta'muruna bil ma'roof wa tanahuna nil munkar wa tu'minuna billah. And he continues, وَلَوْ آمَنَ أَحْلُ الْكِتَابِ لَكَانَ خَيْرًا لَهُمْ But if the people of the book, meaning the Jews and the Christians, if they hearken to this message, the message of Al-Quran, it will be better for them. In other words, it will be better for you. مِنْهُمُ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ Among them there are mu'mins, faithful people. Among the Jews and the Christians, Allah says, there are good people. I didn't want to say that. You wouldn't like to hear that. But this is what Allah says. Min humul mu'minuna wa aktharu humul fasikun. But the majority of them are perverted transgressors. Now we are to share this honor and this privilege with these people, with the rest of mankind, the whole of mankind. But in the first instance, the Jews and the Christians were prepared for this message. Allah bari ta'ala sent prophets after prophets to them. We named them. Hazrat Musa alayhi salam, Moses. Hazrat Dawood alayhi salam, Prophet David. Hazrat Suleiman alayhi salam, Solomon. Hazrat Isaac alayhi salam, Isaac. Hazrat Isa alayhi salam, Jesus. All these were Jewish prophets. All the prophets, most of our give our children Muslim, these names, Musa, Dawood, Suleiman, Ishaq, all these are Jewish names. Allah chose them in the first instance. But he, he, he is carrying out an inexorable law of his own that once he selects you, he chooses you for certain responsibilities, for certain position of honor. And if you do not carry out your responsibilities, then he says, yes, tabdil qawman ghayrakum. He will substitute in your place another people. Thumma la yakun wa Then they won't be like you. So in the religious history of mankind, Allah Bari Ta'ala chose the Jews. As I named some of the Jewish prophets, then among the four heavenly books, which we claim to believe in, we say we believe in the Torah, we believe in the Zabur, we believe in the Injil, and we believe in the Furqan. Furqan is the Holy Quran. Among these four books, 75% are Jewish books given to Jewish prophets. Torah was given to Hazrat Musa alayhi salam, a Jew. Zabur was given to Hazrat Dawud alayhi salam, a Jew. Injil was given to Hazrat Isa alayhi salam, a Jew. Jew, Jew, Jew. 75% of the heavenly books that we affirm we believe in are Jewish books, sent to the Jews. But Allah's law, Allah chooses a people for a certain purpose. See, he chose the Bani Israel. As he says, Ya Bani Israel, askuru na'mati allati anamtu alaykum. Say, O children of Israel, remember the special favors which I did unto you. Wa anni faddaltukum ala al-alameen. That I preferred you above all the peoples of the earth for my special favors. He chose them. But they didn't carry out their responsibilities. They made the religion a racial religion. You have to be born a Jew to be a Jew. They don't want you. So, a Jew among the Jews, Hazrat Isa alayhi salam, according to the Christian record, he's telling the Jews, he says, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a nation bringing forth the fruits thereof. You don't fulfill your obligations. You don't produce fruits. Then Allah will take away that honor, that privilege, and give it, give it to somebody else. And whenever he does that, Allah bari ta'ala, when he does that, when he substitutes one people by another, it is usually the people you look down upon. He makes them to sit on your head. 
This is his way. You see, the Jews were looking down upon the Arabs, their cousins. They say that Father Abraham had two wives, Sarah and Hajra. The children of Sarah are the Bani Israel, the Jews. And they say that the Arabs are the children of Hagar, Bibi Hajra. They say Hagar. They call her children Hagarines. Now they call Islam Hagarism. These are new, new terms that are inventing to hurt our feelings. They call the Arabs Hagarines and, Islam, and the Muslims as uh, Islam as Hagarism. This is in the Christian literature. People that they look down, down upon, that these Arabs are the children of Hajra, who was, they say, a bond woman, a slave woman, a woman from Africa. Actually, she was a princess of Egypt. But the Jews, in their hatred for their cousins, they label, they have been labeling the other prophets and their progeny, and they will not leave out their Arab cousins. So say, these are the children of the bond woman, a slave woman. And as such, yesterday in New York, a Christian woman came for that question time, and she made certain insinuations, saying that Hazrat Ismail salam, was a bastard. Astaghfirullah. And she went on beyond that. She said, everybody is a bastard, including herself, of course. But uh, you see, the hatred makes them to speak like that. See, they say that Sarah was the legitimate wife of Ibrahim alayhi salam, but Hajra, because she was a bond woman, a slave woman, a marriage contract had not taken place. As if, you know, uh, three, four thousand years ago, they went to court, like you go today, or go to a church, and in front of a priest, you know, do you accept this woman as your lawful wedded wife? And you say, I do, and they were supposed to go such, through such processes, which was not the case. But however, God Almighty chose Ismail alayhi salam, and his children, from among his children, we are Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wasallam, the Holy Prophet Muhammad, to supersede the Jewish hierarchy of religion. Yastabdil qawmun ghayrakul. The people that they were looking down upon, Allah bari ta'ala makes them to sit on their heads. This is his law. We come nearer in the Middle East, during the time of Harun al-Rashid, Mamun al-Rashid, Baghdad, Samarkhan, Bukhara, they made it a veritable fairy land. The Muslims, it was a veritable fairy land. Scenes that existed then, you can't reproduce them anymore except on films. On films you can do anything. Hollywood can do anything. But in real life, no more. No Baghdad, no Samarkhan, no Bukhara. On the borders, of our Muslim empire were the Mongols. Mongols, you know, barbarians. Jahangir Khan, Halaku Khan, barbarians. And the Muslims watching them on the border says, these barbarians, what can they understand about Islam? What can they know? They were not interested in propagating the faith. So Allah bari ta'ala, as if commanding them, go on, put them into the dust, and they attacked the Muslim empire and down into the dust, ruin. The shocks, the shocks that the Muslim world received at the hands of the Mongols, we have not come out of, out of the shocks yet. Yastabdil qawmun khayrakum. So Allah says, I will substitute in your place another people. Thumma la yakunu amsalakum. Then they won't be like you. The Muslims ruled Spain for 800 years. There again, they had a wonderful inning, a jolly good time, 800 years. No Christian nation has ever ruled Muslims for that period of time in the history of mankind. The longest that the Christians ruled Muslims is in Mozambique. Mozambique, you know, Mashal. You know, he just met with an accident and he died. Mashal, Samora Mashal, Mozambique, old Portuguese territory. See, about 500 years ago, the Portuguese, with the superior gunpower, conquered that territory. The ruler at that time was Musa bin Baik, an Arab who was in charge of that settlement. Musa bin Baik. The Portuguese couldn't say Musa bin Baik, so they said Mozambique, Muslim territory. Even after 500 years of Portuguese rule, 60% of Mozambique 
is Muslim. So the longest they ruled, ever ruled was at that place, Mozambique. We ruled Spain for 800 years. And we didn't do our job. We didn't do the job. The Muslims, they were looking down upon the people in Spain, that these pig eaters, wine bibbers, what can they understand about Islam? They couldn't. He says, no, they can't. Your forefathers could. Your forefathers, the Arabs' forefathers I'm talking about, drunkards, adulterers, gamblers, they married the stepmothers, they buried the daughters alive. They could be transformed by this Allah's kalam. But the Spanish people, no. 800 years, you know, of enjoyment. Allah Bari Ta'ala describes the scene. He says, Kam taraku min jannatim wa uyun. So how many were the gardens and the fountains they left behind? Wazu'im wa makamin kareem. And cornfields and monumental buildings. Wa ni'matin kanu fiha faqihin. And wealth and the eminence.